In my previous video, I showed you how to use Next.js 10's internationalized routing feature with the Next Translate package. So if you haven't already, please make sure to watch this video. And under that video, Ross commented that he would like to know how to apply this to blog pages. So he sent me his repository and I've already got it forked here. So the way he structured this is that if you go under source and posts, you will see some markdown files and he's wondering how to translate them into different languages. So if we open these markdown files up, we can see that there's some metadata and then the actual blog post, which is currently in English and he would like to translate them into Russian or any language for that matter. So today we're going to do exactly that. All right, so I got this project running here. And if we just take a look at it, it looks like this. So he's got some experiments going on with Next Translate right there. But what's actually interesting is this block at the end where he's got two articles. So let's go click on the first one and then it renders the markdown file, which we looked at. So this is going to be uh, no, it's not this file. It's this file. So this markdown file gets rendered like this. It's pretty nice. The beauty of this is, of course, you can just add new markdown files and then you've got more blog posts. But if you change it to Russian, you just get a 404 because there's no localization support for these markdown files as of right now. And yeah, I guess we're going to change that. So first of all, I want to just hide everything that's not, you know, concerning us, so everything above here. And the way we're going to do this is by going into the index page and then just uh, removing these sections or we don't need to remove them, we can just comment them out. And then in his layout component, we also got to get rid of, this is the head, we got to get rid of, oops, uh, I guess all of that. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. So how does this actually work? Well, in index, we got a get static props function. And in there, we are returning props that um, are a list of all your posts, basically. So we got date, title, and ID that get returned from this function. And we can then create this list right there, which is the one you are seeing here. So get sorted post data. Let's go into this one. And now we are in library posts.tsx. And I have not yet figured out well, this is why this is called TSX because there's no JSX being used in here. So this minus, this can just be called posts.ts. Um, and in there, get sorted post data. This function goes through the post directory. So that's this one right here. And it lists all of the file names. So here we just got two. And then for each one, it um, replaces .md with nothing. It just removes .md from the end of the name. And then you got the post ID. And by ID, what they mean is right here in the URL, ssg-ssr, which corresponds, oops, to this file name. So next thing that happens is it reads the markdown file as string. So it reads the entire file. And then it uses the gray matter npm package to parse the metadata section. Metadata section is this one at the top. And then basically it's just returning the ID along with the date and the title. And at the end, it's just ordering by date. And then we get this array of date, title and ID, which you can then use to render the list. Now we've got two options. Um, we could have this pre-rendering file as a pre-rendering.ru.md version or .any local for that matter. Um, but I think it would get 
pretty cluttered in here. So what I'm proposing is that we create a new folder, pre-rendering, um, and that's the post ID. So then we can copy these two files in there and we're just gonna call it index.md and this one index.ru.md. Now, of course, let's actually uh, make sure that we can differentiate between the two files. So let's just call it the Russian content for now. Uh, and then do the same for the other article, SSG, SSR, move this in there and call it index. Now, if we give it a refresh, it's not going to work because in get static props of our index page, we're calling get sorted post data. And in there, we are assuming that we've got uh, markdown files where we are removing the .md from the name, which is no longer the case because now we have folders in there. So file names is gonna be equal to pre-rendering and SSG SSR. So it's no longer gonna be necessary to remove the .md to get the ID. So what we can do is just name this ID, I guess. And this could just be post IDs. And this full path would then need to include the index.md at the end or index.ru. So we need the locale somewhere. So we need to get it in this function. So let's say we can pass it in as a parameter. And then in here, we are getting a locale from the context object and then just pass it right there. Now what this allows us to do is say file name is gonna be um, index.locale dot md and then this is file name which is not going to work if it's english because if it if the default locale is english like in this case or doesn't need to be english but just the default locale it's not going to be an empty string it's going to be e and us in this example so this would be wrong so now we need to somehow know whether or not this is the default locale and um, what we could do is we could read this i18n JSON file. So let's go up here and say const i18n equals require i18n JSON. And from there we can destructure this default locale, which then allows us to compare our locale to the default locale right there. If that's the case, it's gonna be index.md, otherwise index.local.md. And then once we actually got the entire path, um, we can read the file and you know this stays unchanged. But we're gonna make sure that we keep our edge case in case in, in mind where we do not have a Russian version of the article. So let's actually make sure that this file exists by checking with exists sync full path. And if it doesn't, we're just going to return, which then would, yeah, we would then have undefined entries in this array. So let's just, so we can just filter post post right there. Okay. So English, we got two articles. If we switch to Russian, we get our one Russian article. And it's got the Russian prefix right there because we added it into the title. So I just came back from a short break and I thought we could actually translate um, this article on two forms of pre-rendering to Russian instead of just you know adding Russian to the title. So I throw it into an online translator, it gave me this. And I have no idea if it's correct, but now this should actually say that. <laughs> and if we go back to English, it's gonna be this one and you know, 
the one that we just have in English. Now we need to fix the page that is displaying the blog post. Um, let's just go to English and click on an article. There we go, it's getting, we're getting an error, that's expected. So this is happening in this post.tsx component. And here we are displaying the blog post with React. And down there we have two Next.js functions, get static paths and get static props. Get static paths, of course, gets all the uh, paths that then get put in here in this square bracket ID. And get static props actually gets the post data, so it means it renders the HTML and passes that to the component up here, which can then um, set it onto this div. So let's try to get this to work within get all post IDs. Um, well, this is still assuming that we've got markdown files in here, so we do not need to replace the .md there, which means we can just refactor this to say post IDs, and this would then be post ID. That's that, and get post data is going to be the other one that's called in get static props. So in there, um, same deal. We now got folders instead of files. So this ID is going to be needed in the full path right there. And then we can just say index.md, which should make it work. It does. But of course, we have not added localization support just yet. If we go to Russian, it's still not going to work because we've got this index.md hard coded right there we need to make sure that we are properly localizing this get all post IDs function because this is being used in get static paths. And if we look at the docs right here, it says that um, within get static paths, if you use localized routing, you need to provide the locale for each path that you're returning. So in our case, um, this paths thing right here needs to need some work. Um, what we can do is just say let paths is going to be an array. Then we're going to fill this and at the end we're just going to return it. And uh, since this is TypeScript we're going to need to uh, type it. So params is going to be an object with id string and then locale it's just going to be right there. Now we do need to load post IDs, that's correct. And then we need to go through all these post IDs. And then actually we need all the possible locales that we got configured. So let's just say locales is going to be a string array that, get passed, get, that gets passed into this function. And then for let locale of locales. Um, we gotta check whether or not it exists because this one does not have a Russian version. So let's go ahead and say um, full path is gonna be path.join posts directory with ID and then same deal as this up here. Again, we need to check if it's a default locale and if it is, we're gonna use index.md. If it's not, we're gonna use index.locale.md. So that will be the full path. And then if, um, if it does not exist, this full path, we're gonna continue in the loop but if it does, we will add it to paths. So paths.push, um, params id and locale. Because we've got locale there, id there. Yeah, that should actually look good. So let's save this. And then down here, we need to make this dynamic as well. So we need the 
locale that gets passed in here. And then same deal again. We, could act, we should actually put this into a function Now we just need to provide loc all the locales to this function, which we can destructure from our context object. And then here we can just get the single, the current locale, pass it into there. And that should have been it. Yeah, there's our Russian article. And if we hit English, we get the English article, Russian, Russian article. Okay, so basically we are done. Now we've got the English site, which has our two English articles and the Russian website, which has just the Russian article. The only thing that's left to do apart from, you know, refactoring our code here a bit, um, because we're using this full path on three separate occasions, we can just put it into a function, but I'm not gonna do that right now. What I'm gonna focus on is this date this is still English, right? Um, so we should actually make this work in, or actually translate it to Russian, which is pretty easy. Um, in our index.tsx page, we got a date component that's displaying this date right there. So if we open this up, we can see that it's using date functions to format the date object. And what we can now do is just import a different locale so we can import English first from date functions local emus and then we're also gonna import the Russian locale as an object right there and now we need to pass this to um, the options of the format function so locale we just say local ru, it's gonna be always a Russian. And well, we wanna pass in the locale as a prop to this component. Let's do this right here. This means that we would need to actually provide it to the component, so not there, but right here. Uh, luckily, we get locale from our router, so we can just say local equals local. Same on the id.tsx, which is when you have the post open like this. We need the um, local from use router and then say local local. And now in here, we can say if the passed in local is equal to ENUS, we want to use ENUS, otherwise the Russian object. So now we got it English, and if we go back home and choose Russian, it's going to change to Russian and back to English. All right, that's it. We have successfully added internationalization support to this blog that Ross provided us with. So Ross, I hope I answered your question. And to anybody else who's been watching, um, if you've got any questions, just leave them down in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them. I will not be able to create a video on every single one of them, but I can try. And yeah, if you learn something new, please like the video and consider subscribing. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.